Welcome to the Timco Retail Manager course. This course focuses on real-world application development. In this video, we're going to be setting up a new Azure De DevOps project so we can use the board to track our issues and manage our application design. Now, because this video is going to focus on Azure DevOps, there is no source code for this video. However, if you're looking for the source code from previous weeks, you can head over to my Patreon page where you can get signed up to get the source code each time we change the application. Now, if you're not familiar with this project, let me explain a bit about it. We created the Timco Retail Manager application as a set of simulations of the real world. We started with .NET Framework and upgraded .NET Core in order to gain experience in doing upgrade like this. You see, I'm a firm believer in experience. Seeing someone do something is not the same thing as doing it yourself. So I always encourage people to follow along with me so you can get the experience of doing the work. Then you can do something similar on your own to ensure you really grasp the concepts you're learning. This is how you grow as a C-sharp developer. Now, if you want to catch up to where we are now, I have bundled all the videos and source code for the first part of this course into a course on my website. You can find a link in the description to go to that course and look at what it entails. So let's get started today with working with Azure DevOps. So let's go over to the browser. And here I have my version of Azure DevOps open. Now, if you do not have Azure DevOps, you can go to visualstudio.com. And one of the options here is to get Azure DevOps. Now, unfortunately, they've bundled Azure DevOps with the rest of Azure. So it's a little bit more complicated to sign up than it used to be. It used to be you could just sign up right here for Azure DevOps directly. But now that it is more integrated into Azure, it's part of an Azure subscription. Now, don't let that frighten you off because it's one of 25 free forever services. So let's look at this real quick. So under Microsoft Azure, click Get Started for Free. And in here, you can get started. You can sign up and get 12 months of free services plus $200 of credit to explore Azure for 30 days plus 25 plus services that are always free. So let's talk through those always free services. All right. Now, first of all, the 12 months of free, you can get a Windows virtual machine, Linux virtual machine. Um, you can get a SQL database up to 250 gigabytes worth. You can get five gigabytes of file storage, blob storage. This is all free for a year. Okay. So even Azure, that's actually, I'm sorry, Cosmos DB. That's actually one of the more expensive things you can get for free. Five gigabytes, 400 request units per month for a year. That's actually a pretty significant deal. However, that's just the, the free for a short period of time, short being one year. But then down here, you have always free. So Azure Web Apps. So up to 10 web, mobile, or API apps for free. Up to a million Azure Function calls per month. That's, again, significant. Event grid, integration, and more. But if you look at the list, the full list, you scroll down here, you'll see Azure DevOps, five users with unlimited private Git repositories. This is what we're going to use today, is an Azure DevOps with a private Git repository. All right, so this is what we're setting up is um, our Azure DevOps. Now, I've already got my Azure DevOps open directly. Now, you can go through Azure and set something up, but we're going to just go directly to my specific version of Azure DevOps. And in here, I've got all my different projects. So this is one step higher than the project level. This is, I have multiple projects in here. Now, right now I have just three, or at least three that are visible. I'm going to add a new one for the Timco Retail Manager. And this will house everything about the Timco Retail Manager. Right now, it will just start off as work items. That's all we'll focus on in this video. But in the next video, we'll add in continuous integration, where we actually build our, um, our source code every time we commit. That way, 
we know that it is uh, still building and it's actually building correctly. And if we had unit tests, we'd run those unit tests as well. And maybe we'll add those in the future. And then later we'll add continuous deployment and maybe some NuGet package management and stuff like that. But for right now, we're just going to do work items. So let's set up a project that will be the start of this and we'll continue to expand upon this project, but all in one spot. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new project. Actually, as I'm looking at this, there is no way to add a new project here. And the reason why is because I'm not actually an administrator on this, this particular Azure DevOps account. Forget about that. So I am Tim Corey.visualstudio.com. So here's the one I am an administrator on. Now, yes, I am an administrator on the other ones. It's just that for this, this is actually on a different profile. And so I have access to it, but not access to add a new project to it. So we're gonna go ahead and on this one right here, which I do have access to, notice the new project blue button here. So if you don't see that blue button up here to add a new project, that means you don't have permission to add a new project. So over here on this profile, I have permission. Let's go ahead and add a new project. And I'm going to call this the Timco Retail. I'm going to do all one word. R retail Manager. All right. So this is the um, full course being developed on YouTube. Sounds good. So this is my Timco Retail Manager project. Now I do all one word here because when I clone a repository, by default, it's gonna to wanna to put spaces in to my folder names and that can cause weird issues. And so rather than have those spaces and have it, you know, some spaces, some not, and just be messy, I just make the name into uh, no, no spaces. I could put underscores I wanted to, I believe, um, but let me just verify that before I tell you you can. Yep, looks like underscores will work. Uh, there's certain characters that won't work in here. But I just do no space in there, and that just makes life simple. All right? So it's going to be a private repository. All right? So no one else has access to it. But under advanced, I have version control. And this is where we get to choose. But by default, it's Git. And you want to leave it at Git. You don't want to use Team Foundation version control. That's for legacy projects. It really shouldn't be for any new projects. And work item process, we have four different options. And this is where it can get a little overwhelming. If you're not familiar with, with a Scrum uh, process or Agile process or CM, CMMI, it can be rather daunting. And so Microsoft realized this. One of the things they realized was they are watching people use the, the work items. And they realized that people started getting into it and getting enth enthusiastic about it. They start using it and then they drop off and they stop using it. And one of the big reasons why I stopped using the work item process is because it was complicated. It took a lot of time. And that's one of the, the pitfalls to look out for when you are thinking about setting up a, some kind of, of ticketing process or some kind of bug tracking software or uh, workflow for your software development. Make sure that your process isn't so complicated that you spend more time managing your process than you do managing and working on your code. Because what will happen is if it's too complicated, you'll stop using it. And so this is what Microsoft came up with, basic. And we're going to use this because we're, we're not going to create an agile workflow or a scrum process for our little project that only one person is working on. It's way overkill, and what you end up doing is causing more problems than you solve. So always be pragmatic about these things. Don't just say, oh, well, the industry all uses this, because first of all, no, they don't. And second of all, that just because someone uses something for one project doesn't mean it's good for another project. So we're going to use basic for this and hit create. All right, and this will create for us a new project where everything can be stored inside that project from our source code to our build process to our boards. Okay, so here we go. Our Timco Retail Manager has been created 
and now I can go right to boards. Now on the left hand side, we have overview, boards, repos, pipelines, test plans, and artifacts. We will use most of these in the upcoming months in the Timco Retail Manager. We probably won't use test plans, but we'll see. Maybe we will. We'll probably do some unit testing, but not necessarily test plans. But we probably will use artifacts. We'll definitely use pipelines. It's actually the next video will be on continuous integration where we'll use pipelines. And our source code will end up being in our repository. But notice right now, there is no source code here. And that's okay. This is one of the things that people often miss about Azure DevOps is you don't have to use it for everything. If you want to use it just as a wiki, you could do that. So right here in the overview, you can have a wiki right there. You can create one and start working on a, um, a wiki for your project if you wanted to. Now, probably you want to use it for a little more than that because that seems like a, a limited use for Azure DevOps, but it is possible to do it just for that. Another one is people often pay for Jira or for other tools that are of a similar nature. And with that, you get a lot of complexity and a lot of stuff that maybe you just wanted to have a way to add work items and track them. Well, Azure DevOps has that built in. And so if you don't want to go to the full complexity of some of these systems, you can use Azure DevOps for free. Now, again, just because you can doesn't mean it's going to be best for every situation. So what's going to work for one organization might not work for another. So don't just say, this is the way we'll always go. But I would say for simple, small projects, this is absolutely the way to go. You shouldn't need to pay for something when you're using very little of it. Okay, so this is what we're going to concentrate on today is boards. We're going to add um, work to these boards and we're going to start using these as a way to track what work needs to be done. All right, so we have five different sections here. We're going to use four of them. Actually, we'll probably use three of them. So for our purposes, work items and backlogs are pretty much the same thing. It's just a list of the things that need to get done. Boards, if you used uh, Trello or seen a Kanban board or something like that, that's what this is. And it's really simple. You've got to do, doing, and done. That's it. And so what that'll track is what work needs to be done, what work are we currently doing, and then what work have we completed? And it kind of just tracks our flow over time. Now, we're not going to get into sprints. Uh, the idea behind a sprint is you put a, a group of work together and say, we'll get this work done in maybe a week or maybe two weeks or maybe even a few days. And you, you put that work together and you say, okay, that's sprint number one. And you can schedule out three, four, five, six sprints ahead of time and say, okay, we're going to put this work off until this time. And you can start working on one sprint at a time. That's a little more complex than we need to get for a single user project. Down here in queries, this is where we can do uh, queries. And we may use it a little bit. Now, a query is just where we do filtering based upon our work items. And you can kind of dial into exactly what you want to see. This is more useful when you have a team. So you can say, give me all of my high priority work tickets that are open. And we'll filter just to your tickets, just the ones that are high priority, and just the ones that are open. Um, and so that you can focus on the most important things right away. All right. But if it's one person, really, it comes down to everything on the work item list is yours to deal with. So deal with it. All right. Okay. So with that, let's talk through how, what do we do here? So let's go to the boards. It's probably easiest. If you go to work items, you can say add work item. You have three options, epic, issue, and task. If you go to boards, you just say add new item and it's going to add an issue. All right. And the reason why it adds an issue is because that's kind of like the unit of work or the, the overall idea, the concept. And then if you want to break it apart, you can. One issue can be broken up apart into multiple tasks. So you can say, um, let's just add continuous integra integration. We're going to do continuous integration. That might be an issue. 
And then tasks underneath that might be move source code to Azure DevOps. Right now it's in GitHub. We don't have to, but that might be one of the tasks we undertake. Another task might be set up the, the workflow process. Another task might be to test the workflow process or the continuous integration process. All right, so there might be multiple tasks underneath setting up continuous integration. An Epic is kind of like a, a higher level view and it's one that we won't get into, I don't think, in our, our process. Again, we're trying to keep this as simple as, pro as possible. So an Epic would be the idea that you have multiple issues underneath an Epic. An Epic might be a larger thing. That's why it's the name Epic. Um, where it might be something like uh, add Xamarin Forms support for Timco Retail Manager. All right. So Xamarin Forms is a bigger deal. That's a whole user interface to set up. Well, that might be one epic, and underneath that might be multiple ta issues. Underneath those issues might be multiple tasks. And so you can kind of see the, the overall idea, the concept behind an epic. We'll see if we get to epic level or not. Um, we may, if we decide to put big things in here and then break them apart into issues, we'll see. Okay, so for right now, I know we have one issue to deal with. Let's go right to boards and add that. And that's the, um, it's actually pointed out in the comments. We have a fix security key in source code. Okay, so just doing new item and type it out, it creates this for us. And it sets it up, it gives it an item number, this is the title, the state is currently to do. Notice it's in the to do column. If I were to drag this over, the state is now doing. If I were to drag it over again, the state is now done. So just dragging it over changes that state, makes it very easy to work at the highest level with these items. Now, if we click the ellipsis in the right hand corner, we can open this up and get more information. All right. And again, Microsoft has really trimmed down how much information is stored in here. Let me just real quick switch over to, uh, let's go to Docker Tools. I know that Docker Tools has, in a board, it has more items. Notice bug, epic, feature, issue, task, te test case, and user story. Which one of those do you need? Some of them seem really similar. All right. And if we were to create a bug, let's just create a bug here. Notice all the options you have here. Yes, you have the title and assigned, but then the reason, the area, the iteration, the priority, the severity, the effort, the related work, the repro steps, there's a lot of stuff in here. Whereas with this one, we have the, yes, we have area and iteration, which we'll leave alone actually. Is it put by default in sprint one? Um, we have description, we have discussion about it, and we have the priority, all right? And a priority is something that you set on this. This is just kind of your idea or your concept of what priorities are. So with this secu uh, fixed security key in source code, I'm gonna add a little bit more to the description where I can say, uh, we moved the security key out of one part of the API but failed to also move it out of the token controller. Okay, this is something that was pointed out in the comments that we actually had two places where the security key was used. We moved it out of one place in appsettings.json, but we didn't reference that same location at appsettings.json in the token controller where it's still hard coded in our code. So we need to make sure we fix that. That's a issue that needs to get worked on. Now I've added a little bit more description here. I could add images if I wanted to. I could also mention a work item using the hashtag. So I could say um, hashtag 14 to reference, well, that'd be this issue, that would be redundant. But if we had another work issues related, I could relate, I could um, mention that. I could also use the at symbol to reference somebody else. So, you know, Bob found this, and 
you know, so this is where, where the problem is and this and who found it that way you could go talk to Bob if you needed more information. All right. So you can put emojis, you can do whatever you want here, but the idea is get in, get out quickly. Don't worry about all this setup if you don't need to. Discussion here, you can use this as a running discussion with your teammates to say, hey, I looked into this problem and I don't think it's a problem. And someone comes back, yes, I think it is a problem because um, it now might not match the app settings.json. And you can go back and forth if you want and all that history is there with this issue. But for us, we're just going to add the description. I'm not even going to assign it because there's not really a reason to at this point. It's just me, all right? So there's no reason to add extra steps in my process to assign it to myself when I'm the only one that works on these projects. Therefore, I'll leave it alone like this. And in fact, for the most part, I might not even open up these, these issues. I might just... Um, Say new item, type it out, and be done. That's it. I want to be in, out, quickly. Now, what the, what's the benefit of doing this? Well, first of all, we now have a to-do list for ourselves. I mean, it literally says to-do. We've got a list of things that we need to get done. We can identify and say, okay, we're going to work on that today, so therefore we can move over to, to doing. So we know, okay, these are the things I'm working on today. And then when, when it's done, we can just... Uh, mark it as complete, or we can move it over to done, whatever you want to do. All right. So really simple way of tracking what you're doing, but it also then gives you a history of what you've done. But even more importantly, if we open this up and go to deployment, notice over here for deployment and development, there is information about tracking releases based upon this, this um, issue number. So what we can do is whenever we make a commit, we can link it, link this item to that commit. So if I make a change where I say, okay, I'm gonna make a change to this, I'm gonna fix this um, today. And I work on this code, and when I go to commit the source code, I can associate it with issue number 14 and say this fixes issue number 14. And then that will link which commit fixed this security code. That way, again, later, you can come back and say, you know what, we're still having that problem. I thought we fixed that. And you can go and look at this issue. You can look at the source code, the changes that are made, and go, yeah, it did fix that. But since then, we reverted those changes. And we can have a better picture of what's going on with our application. So these will get hooked up once we have continuous integration and continuous deployment set up. So we'll actually see more tracking information really for almost free. It's gonna be pretty close to free. We'll get a much better picture of what we're fixing, when we're fixing it, how it was fixed, and when it was deployed in a production and what version. But for right now, let's close this out. And we have our one issue here, which is a fix a security key in source code. All right. Now let's open up Visual Studio real quick. And I just wanna point that error out. We're not gonna fix it today, but I do wanna point that error out just in case you aren't tracking with me what I'm saying. In the token controller down here, we have use symmetric security key and that's the security key. My secret key is secret, do, so do not tell. But earlier, and I believe it was startup, we moved our security key out to a secrets place in appsettings.json, and there's our security key. Again, that's a development security key. It's obviously not going to be, well, not obviously. It's, we're not going to use it in production, okay? This is not secure if we use the same key in production. In production, we'll overwrite this with a private key that no one has access to, all right? So... We want to make sure that the token controller points to the same app settings.json file so that later we don't have to change it in two different locations when we change it. So that's one bug we need to fix. So we'll address that in a little bit, not this video. But we also have this list here, our roadmap. And this is where we can possibly get into our um, either our more issues or epics. So 
setting up continuous integration and continuous deployment. That's two things we should do. So let's come over here to our, our items. Let's actually resize this window so you can see both. There we go. Add new item, set up uh, continuous integration. And CI means continuous integration. But then let's go ahead and open this up and Actually, I'm not sure you can do it here. Let's go back over to our work items. There is uh, continuous integration. And from here, nope, that's not the location, backlogs. So this is where, again, it can get a little confusing sometimes to have um, all the different spots for different things. But under backlogs, under setup continuous integration, there's this little plus button here where it can add a task. This would be move source code from GitHub to Azure DevOps. Okay, and we save and close. And now that task is underneath set up continuous integration. Now we can add another task here where we say configure CI pipeline. And I can add one more which would be test CI pipeline. And so not all of these will be source code changes. So these right here um, won't really, especially these two, won't actually make any changes to the source code directly. Even this one, which is moving from the source code from GitHub to Azure DevOps, doesn't change the actual source code. It just changes where our Git repository points to. That's it. So. This way we do have tasks, we can break it down. That way if, you know, one of the things I often find is that when I have an overall task, a big task, I often forget a step if I don't write it down. And this way I can write down what are the tasks to do in order to set up continuous integration. Well, I've got to move the source code from GitHub to Azure DevOps. I'll configure the CI pipeline and test the CI pipeline. Once I've done all three of those things, I can mark all three of them off. And then I'll complete the set up the continuous integration. Because continuous integration is not done until all three of these tasks are complete. Now you can go back to the board and you'll see that zero out of three tasks are complete for set up continuous integration. So you can click on this, you could check off a task and complete it. And then you'd see one out of three is complete for this overall setup continuous integration. So there can be some, some levels here to our items. But like for this one, there's no reason to have a level. It's just fix it, all right? So let's add another item, and this is set up continuous deployment. I'll spell it out. Let's spell out this one as well. Um, Sorry, the font's a little small there. Um, that better? Hopefully. Um, not a lot of real estate to work with though on the screen. So now we have continuous integration set up, continuous deployment. These are tasks we need to do. We can kind of get rid of this text file once we got all of our things moved over to our boards. So let's add another item which is move the API to Azure or Azure, I say it, and move the database to Azure SQL. Okay, that's probably gonna have some tasks underneath it, but I'll leave it alone for now. But I'll have one for our entity framework database, our identity frame, our identity database, and one for our um, our product database, which is just a regular SQL database. Okay, so we'll move those. And then we want to have another one that is deploy the desktop app to Azure Blob Storage, which that'll actually probably come before we set up continuous deployment. The same with API move and the, the database is a SQL, the Azure SQL, because 
once these are set up, then continuous deployment will know where to put all the files once it's deploying them, all right? And then we need to have a web-based inventory control system. Good question. Uh, you know what? I'm going to hit escape there. And I'm going to go over to my, my work items. I'm going to add a new epic. All right? And this epic will be um, web-based inventory control system, since that seemed a little more involved. And so we'll work on adding items to that epic. All right, so you won't find that in the board because we're gonna find that, um, it's not in the backlog, I don't believe. You find that only in the work items because then underneath this, you'll add items in the our work items, which then get added to our boards and backlogs. And that's why I say epics aren't often used when you're first getting started. And I would actually encourage you not to use epics if you can help it because of the fact that it does add a little bit of complexity to your boards. If you're used to just saying, okay, what's in the board? Let's get this work done. I'm going to start dragging stuff over, do it, and I'm done. Well, the problem there is that you don't see epics unless you actually go over to epics. And now you can see an epic and you can see what's being worked on in that epic. So it makes it a little bit more confusing, a little bit less um, easy to use. And the more friction you put into your, your boards, into your task management, the less likely it is you'll use it. So I always encourage people, start off super simple, really simple. Don't listen to the, the, the people out there are going to tell you, oh, you need to have these 18 different things in this really complicated setup. You just won't use it until you get comfortable with the first steps. Don't try to leap to the end of a marathon. Start with step one. Just get something working. Because something is better than nothing. And then you can slowly iterate from there. Don't just try and get to the, the end perfect state. Because what will happen is... It'll be too much friction, it'll be too difficult, and you're much more likely to fail. All right, we have a few more things here that are in this list up here that aren't um, necessarily on this list, and they might not be in phase two, we'll see. Uh, probably web-based reporting will be in phase two. And um, there's another one up here that I saw, oh, Xamarin Formaps. I'm almost certain that'll be in, in phase two. So those two will probably get added at some point, but right now we'll leave them off a list because we've got enough to get us started over the next few videos. And that's something else that is um, something to think about is do you really want to overload the system with everything you need to do? Or can you get away with just adding the next few things you need to do and track those and then keep adding to it? Um, I'm more the latter where I add to it over time rather than trying to put everything in it all at once because plans change. And so, again, I don't want to spend so much time managing my system going, okay, well, that's not a valid task anymore. Let's clean that up. Or we can ignore those three tasks. because they're not, they're not really on the main thread anymore. We're going to kind of do some things differently. That makes your system more clunky. All right. So I want it to be focused and easy to use. So we will probably keep this text file for now. I'll trim it down in the next video. Um, since we're not actually saving any source code today, I don't want to modify this and then have just a text file change for our source code change. Okay, so that, let's expand this out. That is our Azure DevOps setup using just the boards. So using just the boards here um, for tracking work items and moving things through from working on them to completed, all right? So we'll use this over our next videos to start associating our commits with the work that we do and have that much better tracking process. In our next video, we're gonna set up continuous integration where we first move our source code into this repository. We don't have to, but we're going to. Um, and we'll talk through the, the various options there. Then we'll come down to pipelines. In pipelines, we'll set up a continuous integration pipeline where we can work with our source code and have it build every time. 
not deploy, just build. And that's continuous integration. Continuous deployment is where you deploy every time. But continuous integration is where every time you commit, it's going to check to make sure our source code actually builds. And note that, yes, we could pull from GitHub if you wanted to. But again, we're going to pull right from our Azure DevOps instead. Until then, thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.